Welcome back everyone to episode 2 of the block pattern. So the last episode we checked out streams and how we use streams and incorporated that in our app. So in this video we will extract uh, the streams and put the, those into another class which fundamentally creates the block pattern. So if you haven't checked out the last episode uh, I will link it in the description and also put it up in the right corner. Uh, and let's just dive into it. Get a free full month of Skillshare and stream more than 18,000 online classes on subjects like design, business and tech. After a while and you feel like this isn't for you, you can always cancel a subscription and not pay anything. So don't wait, try it out now. The link is in the description. So here we have the last episode's project. Uh, so just to be clear, I just distracted the uh, last uh, page into its own file. So the stream counter page is now in its own file. Uh, or its own file, just so we can clear up the main.art. So what we'll do now is create a new folder called widgets. Uh, and the file we will now have in this uh, this widget is called a, a block provider, or that's what we'll name it to, so provider. And the code for this block provider will be in the, the GitHub repository. Uh, but we will have two things. So first off is that we will have a abstract class that we can inherit it from and that will just make us have the dispose method. And then we have the block provider which is just a simple stateful widget where we can provide a block and a child. And this is so we can get or access the block from a, another page. And you can use inherited widgets also but inherited widget does not provide a dispose method. Uh, which makes this a bit better, in my opinion. So there we have our block provider, and I will open the folder so you can see the structure of the project as we go. So now here, down in the, uh, the main.art, we will cut this stream counter out, and we will uh, use the block provider instead. So for the block provider, and open that up and we can import this block provider we just created. And the block provider takes two parameters. So one is the block and one is the child. So the block we have not created yet and for the child we have not created either. So I will just let them be here so we can see what we're going to create. Uh, and I will create a child first just so uh, we can render something on the screen later, faster. So for the pages, we create a new page or a new Dart file. And let's rename it to something like home block counter or home, no, not home. Something like block counter page. Just to make it clear that we're uh, this will pretty much be, be the same as the stream count page, just that we use a block instead of the stream right in the page. So we can take the full code of the stream, put it inside here. So right now I'll just hide this uh, project so we can see a better, uh, we see this a bit better. Uh, we remove the streams from this page. And then at the top, we also remove the streams. And in dispose, because we we can actually remove the whole dispose because we will not dispose anything that is handled by the block itself. Uh, like that. So for this page to work, uh, we have to first uh, create our, uh, our block. So in the lib, we can create a new a new uh, directory and we will just call this directory blocks so we can structure all our blocks there we create a new dart file which we re rename to counter block so for this counter block to work we create a new class called counter block and now we can use something we just created in the block provider, which was the block base. And if we import the block base. So as you can see now, 
this uh, forces us to implement the override to the dispose function. And if we alt enter this, we can create one missing override, which is the dispose. And this, uh, this is something we need because uh, we will create streams in here. So if you didn't uh, watch the last episode, uh, be sure to watch it or just that you know the basics for streams. So at the top here, we create a variable called counter. And we will start by creating the stream controller. And because this will only be a counter, we'll set the variable to int. And for um, the name of the counter controller, we'll some set it something like counter controller. And I'll close this now so we can see this a bit better. We create a stream controller. which is type int of course, and then we end that. So we can import the data sync, so we can have the stream controller in here. And now as the last episode, we have to close this instance. So we go to our dispose, we call the counter controller and then close this controller. There we have the basics. So what we'll do now is just a quality of change and make the code uh, easier to manage. We'll create a getter for the sync. So the sync was uh, where you put in the data, which will be an int. And we'll call it something like in add. And this will use be, only be used internally in this counter block. That's why we set it to private. And the same for this counter controller. And this will point to the, the counter controller and use the sync of that. And I forgot to set a getter for that. So there we have the sync. Now we create a stream. And the stream will also be in int, which is a getter. And this will be with, uh, what will provide to the stream, the stream builder. And this will do the same. It will point to the counter controller's stream. There we go. So now we have a way to listen to this counter and also add something to the counter. But to make this more uh, useful, we will create stream a stream for handling the increment. So pretty much a, a function. So first off, we'll just comment this since to handle the counter. And now we'll create the increment of the counter. So inside here, we can create a stream controller again, which is a type int. We call it out like increment controller. And this will just be a stream controller of type int. Uh, and then of course we have to close this instance if we are not using it anymore. So increment controller and then close. And we are going to do the same as before. We create a sync of type int. So this will be the increment controller or counter, increment counter, which will just print, uh, point to the sync. So there we go. Uh, now we will have to create a a constructor for this uh, page. So we create a counter block. So inside this counter block, we set our counter to zero, zero so we can initialize it. And the increment counter, it will listen to something. So if you type strip and then there will be a listen uh, function. So on this on data, uh, we will put our function. So now we get to the actual function. And this can be a bit of boilerplate code, uh, but all of this has its own value and we have to use them or else it won't work. So we create our increment function, which will just take some data. So the increment right there. So inside of this function, we'll just do something like counter is equal to counter 
plus one. And then we call our in add function. We can add a value and that value will just be the counter. And you can do as before, we can use increment or with, uh, with counter also. I will just make it try uh, two ways just to make this example more clear. So there we have the fundamentals of the counter block. And also if, if this is too simple, in next episode we will uh, use a user block to uh, change the name and stuff like that. So we save that. We can actually just copy this just in case I forget the name. Close this off. And inside main here, right now we have actually created the block, right? So we can provide a block in here. So we import it. And then for the child, we have created the child also, which is this um, block counter page. And let's just rename that to something like block counter page. We take this file. We can actually remove the async because we're not using any controls in here. We can put that right there. So, oh, and also import it. So right now we have a block provider. We provide our counter block to this widget right here. So for the next step, inside this counter block, we will actually have to get this um, uh, get this variable or this block. So inside the build function, we will create a final counter block. Was it counter block? can't actually remember like that final let's see if I'm doing it right now create a counter block counter block can't I import it yeah now I can import it. okay so for the counter block we will call the block provider and we will import that also. So the block provider, we can call off and we will take the block or the counter block we just created and just give it the context of this page. So there we have access to our counter block. So if we take this now, we can go down to stream. We can paste in our counter block. And if you uh, get the, the IntelliSense up, we can see that we have increment counter, out counter. And these are the only two we actually need right now. So we have the out counter, um, which is, as you can see, the type here is the stream. And the increment counter is the sync where we put in the data. So this is the same as the last episode with stream and sync. So in the stream, we just call our out counter. So if we actually rerun this right now, it shouldn't be any difference. But you can see that our increment is not working. So right here, we can call our counter block again, and we can increment the counter. We call the add function. And then inside here, we will just uh, give it the value null, because if we check the increment counter right here, we can see that it takes the data, and we actually have to give it data or else it won't respond to our call. And we set that to null because we have our own um, increment values right in here. So if we rerun this right now, it should be working. So there we go. There we have a full implementation of the block pattern as a counter widget. And as I said before, this is a, a very simple implementation of the counter widget. Uh, I will actually rename these things. Um, so in the next episode, we'll go to a more complex use case with a user, uh, a user model instead of use the counters. We can change the name and stuff like that and change the actual full variable and not just increment a counter. But this is the fundamentals of block. You create streams in its own, in its own uh, block. If I can find a block, there we go. You create its own stream in. Uh, in the block 
right here and you dispose of it if you don't need it and then I just create getters and setters or getters for the strings and things so if you have if you want a another function for example you create two more of these and just rename them and give it another function and the block provider is provided in the github and the counter page the only thing we actually need to uh, to provide in this build is the counter block which will just get the, the parent provider so that's all for this tutorial i hope you enjoyed this i hope this all makes sense in the next episode as I said before, we'll go a bit deeper and explain it a bit more. So if it didn't stick right now, uh, try to play around with it and see if you get some understanding of how this is working. Uh, and hopefully the other episode will make it a bit easier to understand. Uh, so as always, if you liked the video, please let me know by liking the video and comment what you didn't understand or understood and if it makes sense. And also subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the content and want to see more future content. Uh, so I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye.